When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374-0409. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property, offering expert advice on preparing your home for the market. Let's go! International evening. Good evening, I'm Paul Cooney. Guess who's with us tonight, as always on a Friday, Barry Ferguson. Barry, how are you feeling about tonight? Netherlands against Scotland? Yeah, looking yeah. forward to it. Um, obviously, it'll be a difficult game. Holland, are, um, I've got some top uh, top footballers. Um, but look, listen, it's a good test for the Scotland team. I think there'll be a, a couple of changes. I think Stevie Clark will... I'll give a few players the opportunity to go and show that they are worthy of a place in the Euro squad for Germany. So looking forward to it tonight, Paul. And we're welcoming someone from the other side of the divide with you. You're from <laughs> Hamilton. He's from Motherwell. It's the Motherwell and Scotland international defender. Welcome, Stephen O'Donnell. Hi, Paul. How are we? Great, thanks. Good to see you tonight. Uh, must be special for you. It's not that long ago since you were playing uh, for Scotland. I saw you at Wembley just a couple of years ago in the Euros. How are you feeling about this game tonight? Yeah, I no, look excited. Um, full of optimism for the upcoming tournament and um, looking to see how the, the manager starts to shape up and, and what ideas he's looking to, to, to implement tonight for, for the lead up to the tournament. You know that squad so well. Everyone says it's a bit like a club atmosphere. Is that the case? Yeah, no, definitely. I don't see too many changes since I was in it. And at the time, it was it was nothing but getting better every camp. And the, the boys loved going. You see with how little pullouts there is now, um, everyone's eager to be there and, and wanting to impress. And, and you hear by the sounds of it in training, they're at it. They were always at it for me. I was struggling for, for day one <laughs> in, the, in the international training. But look, it's been um, it's, it's brilliant to see and, and hopefully it continues. Barry, as you well know, he more than, he never let Scotland down. Yeah, McDonald. Yeah, but yeah. exactly. We spoke about it on a, a yeah. number of occasions. Um, went in there and always done a, a really good job. And when you just look at that Scotland squad, I know there's been um, a few yeah. pullouts, and also a, a few players like Callum McGregor and um, Hickey who are out injured. That's a real strong squad, fully equality in my opinion. Oh eight, oh eight, seventeen, seventeen, seven hundred. You can speak to Barry, the former Scotland captain. And to Stephen with 26 Scotland caps. The game is just a couple of hours away. We'll get the team news in a little while. We're going to hear from Steve Clark and we'll get your lineups as well. The talking points are who's going to be in goals, for example. Is it going to be Angus Gunn or will it be Craig Gordon? Or it could be Liam Kelly, it could be Xander Clark. And what about up front? Shea Adams, maybe? Or Lyndon Dykes or Lawrence Shankland? Let's hear from the manager speaking first of all, well, about the squad, the squad withdrawals. Scott McKenna, as you mentioned, and Grant Hanley. I was thinking, because that's my job. I actually had a lot of centre backs in the squad anyway to get them in, gauge their fitness, uh, have a look at them up close and train them. So to lose two is disappointing. Obviously, we did, we knew there was a chance that Grant Hanley wouldn't come. Uh, disappointing to lose Scott. He played it. Last Sunday, travelled, having felt something, but was sure that it would disappear within 48 hours. It hadn't disappeared, he could still feel something. So rather than take a risk, we, we just decided that Scott would go back to his club. After the game tomorrow night, we'll reassess the squad and decide if we need to add to it. Um, Scott McKenna, you're quite close, I think, I believe, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah. good friends with him and since uh, Peru and Mexico. That was the um, first time I met him, to be right. honest. Yeah. Um, been a pain in the backside since, but... Um, <laughs> But no, um, disappointing he's had to come out. I know he was itching to, to be playing. He, the, he played the last couple of games as well, despite mm-hmm. not playing at, at Forest. And uh, now he's out playing at Copenhagen and, and really enjoying his football and, and, and playing well. So so it'll be disappointing he's missing this squad, but um, but I'm sure he'll be itching to hopefully be in the, the Euro one. Barry, no surprise that he didn't add to it. He didn't seem to need to for these games. No, and as he just mentioned yeah. there, Paul, I'm sure, I'm sure, sorry, he'll assess it after the game tonight. There might be a few niggles, um, and then maybe Saturday or Sunday he'll bring in um, one or two players for the game on Tuesday night against Northern Ireland. One of the other things is, who's going to be in the midfield? And is uh, Lewis Ferguson going to start tonight? Going to get your line-up shortly. We might come to you first, Stephen, because you're a, a welcome visitor this evening. I know you've been on before on the programme, but first time with Barry and myself. Let's hear from your old boss, Stevie Clark, speaking about the squad. Listen, it's, uh, the training's been really intense, but to be honest and, and to be fair to the players, the, the training is normally very intense when we come together. We, we have a good camaraderie. 
and within the squad. It's something that we've built over the last four and a half years. They understand that I can only pick 23, and they're all trying to show how good they are in training, which is fantastic because it drives the it drives the standard up, and and hopefully you see in the two games coming up that everybody's trying to show that they want to be part of the Scotland squad that goes to Germany in the summer. It's hard to believe, Barry, in a way, that we've had five games and no wins. And we know England, you know, Spain, France, and then two draws. But uh, he wants to get a win tonight or Tuesday. Yeah, but I mean, we have spoke about it a few times in the show. I, I like the fact that they're going and playing top teams, Paul. Um, and I think that's where you learn the most. Uh, and he's not scared to go and do that. You can see, obviously, with tonight's game, I think Holland, are, look, I don't think they're the same sort of team or as strong as a few years ago, but they're still a, a team that's got um, some high quality players in. Um, and listen, every game you enter, Paul, you want to obviously try and get that, that victory, but it's a, a good chance for them to accept, uh, assess the squad, sorry. And there's be a few, I would imagine there'll be a few changes um, tonight for these guys to go and prove that they can be in the, the squad for Germany. And Stephen for Holland, uh, it's not. As the, the names there's not as many huge names as there were when Barry played them uh, a few years ago but for example it's not any bigger than Virgil van Dijk and I wonder who he's going to come up against tonight so I'm starting the team the other way around who do you think van Dijk will be facing yeah, no, Scotland? I definitely yeah. think um, played against him when he was at Celtic and he's certainly a, a, a presence um, one of the best if not the best defender in the world so whoever plays out of the three it will be some test for them. What did you think about when you played against them? Then have you got? Do you remember? Have you got moments you remember and think? Yeah, I did well there. Or? I, I never well. It was. <laughs> a, I remember at Parkhead. It was. Um, we were at Partick Thistle. We went down to ten men as if it wasn't hard enough. And he's. I'm at right back. I've tucked in, and he's strutted. That's the way he yeah. used to run with the ball. Yeah. Strutted forward and was threw me a step over this in the box. <laughs> I just remember if this guy's not good enough for England, we're in a yeah. pile of trouble. Yeah. But obviously, how good he's been. And I, I don't know if MD would have expected that, but he's certainly some some player and, and some talent. Sure is, Barry. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought he yeah. strolled it when he was up here. Yeah, good Watched phrase. him many a times. Um, and listen, I think the bigger teams were reluctant to, to go and take him. Obviously, Southampton uh, paid good money for him, and then he, he was exceptional for Southampton. And, since he's went to Liverpool um, he, he's been for me he is the, the best centre back about uh, it took him a bit of time to get back to his best after he's knee obviously injury. suffered his, his knee injury but I mean I've watched him this season and um, again he's just he's top class in my, my eyes and Barry what do you think of Jeremy Frimpong who's ripping it up this season isn't he in Germany yeah and he's always linked with moves yep. um, but listen he's, he's playing at a team Bayer Leverkusen who are top of the, the Bundesliga um, and I, I'm sure that they'll win that but listen he's been over to Germany Paul since he's left Celtic and again he's proved um, what a quality right back he is Stephen what's the story with you and him you've played against him a number of times I've never really been too, up, up directly against him too yeah, often sure. um, but, but I've been delighted yeah. at that because his acceleration over 2-3 or three yards was ridiculous yeah. and um, it just made you cover the line and then he would mm. jot inside so look he was he had again maybe a wee bit more surprised I didn't know how good he, he would have been but I certainly thought he was a very good um, talent and had ridiculous pace which is always a positive So Scotland against Holland tonight I'm glad you said Holland apparently these days you're supposed to say the Netherlands yeah, I've always so, said Holland that's why I called them the Netherlands at the beginning <laughs> a bit of both Stephen as the guest what's your team for tonight? Look I think there's again the, the squad's full of players that could start mm -hmm. um, I think he's touched on saying he's going to maybe try something a bit different mm -hmm. so kind of bearing that in mind I'm going to stick with tried and trusted back five. Uh, I'm going to maybe give Gordon a nod because I'm thinking if he's brought him, he wants to see where he's at. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I don't really think he mm -hmm. needed to bring him. Yeah, because um, you know what he can do. Exactly. In a top so game. He's maybe just it's about his fitness and yes, uh, potentially. Yeah, so again, I'm not. Okay. I don't. Yeah. I'm not Steve Clark on his head, but that's what I'm maybe thinking. So see him thinking that this will be a busier game than the Northern Ireland, and then I go back five. Mm -hmm because they're a good opposition to respect it. Patterson, I'm going to go Suter beside them. Right. I think Suter's yeah. been excellent for Rangers. Um, and see how he maybe fits in, because he's probably got the least amount of games mm -hmm. in the in the defenders, yeah. probably. And then I will go with, I've got Henry and mm -hmm. Tierney and Robertson, mm -hmm. um, a bit more regular. And then we'll go a diamond in the middle. Mm -hmm. With McGregor being out, I think it gives Gilmore a good opportunity to be the 
the pivot as people like to call it mm -hmm. um, and then you'll have McTominay and McGinn either side and then again looking to see what, what Lewis can do maybe give Lewis Ferguson an opportunity um, again he's, he's came on a lot he's not started too many games and uh, see how he is leading up he's been in ridiculous form over, over in Italy and then I'll, I'll probably give Shankland a nod mm -hmm. I think if there's ever going to be a game you test him it's against Virgil van Dijk and, and if he was to play tonight and have a good game well there's no bigger stake to for your no. international career so you would go I hear you I know your team Barry so yeah I'm, I'm yeah. pretty similar yeah. it's just the, the, the three centre backs that mm -hmm. I'm unsure I think mm -hmm. Portis and then it's between Henry and Suter the, the only thing I'm worried about Jack Henry is because he's playing in Saudi Arabia yeah. he's not mm -hmm. coming up against top opposition every single week mm -hmm. um, so I think it might be a like Portis Suter and, and Tierney the back three the rest of them the, the exact same as Stephen I think it's a, a perfect game for Shanklin to go and show that he, he can play at international level because we know what Shea Adams can do we know what Lyndon Dykes can do and then um, hopefully my, my young nephew gets the opportunity because yeah. when you look at the, the midfield for Scotland it is the strongest part of the mm -hmm. team there's a lot of quality players there but hopefully he gets that, that nod tonight and, and shows up pretty well Stephen you've played um, alongside most of them and against most of them as well Lewis Ferguson so what was he like to come up against when he was at Aberdeen? Constantly kicking you. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> uh, he was, is. I think it was something that maybe get. Sometimes when there's players that bring that sort of aggression, and, and he had it when he it was Aberdeen. He played in the six. He also played in the ten. And um, when Kenny McLean was there, he he maybe get disrespected for being more just physical because mm -hmm. he he had that physical side. Um, but technically, you see it in his goals. Some of his goals are brilliant. But then whenever you train with them, whenever you train with players, you always see the, the kind of the full package. And in training on the ball, he was as, as good as anyone. And by all accounts, what I've heard is since he's came back from Italy to the camps, mm. he's went to another level mm. in training, which is up, be great to see. I only know him as a, a person a few times. Yeah. Travelled through with him to Edinburgh when we were training before the Ukraine um, game. And seemed a great guy, yeah. delighted for him. I've heard opposites about, about his uncle. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what about his dad? <laughs> <laughs> Derek, you, you... I know Derek, Derek of course. Uh, yeah. but, uh, what, but no. what would you say about Stephen's comments? Would that be fair that people didn't quite realise how good he was? Yeah, they, yeah. That, that, that is a case because yeah. he is physical. He likes to put it about. Yeah. Listen, he's... he's um, but also, he's a good football player. And I think, obviously, watching all these games where, when I can, yeah. when he's playing with Bologna... 100% this season he's been up a level or two and it helps when he's got a manager in Thiago uh, Mota who was a top midfielder himself so I think his game's come on and I just hope now that he gets the, the opportunity but he is wary of what he's up against because um, the players mm. that are in that Scotland midfield in my eyes are, are quality players John McGinn I mean he, he's been exceptional for Aston Villa McTominay you see what he's doing at Man United and for Scotland Billy Gilmer great wee football player and then don't forget guys like Ryan Christie mm -hmm. who's playing week in week out for Bournemouth Stuart Armstrong who I think's a a very good player Kenny McLean's also done True. a good job for Scotland so they're pretty top heavy in midfield Billy Gilmer he challenged you for what Scotland's player of the day in the match against England the two of you were outstanding I mean Billy Gilmer was phenomenal he, incredible footballer I think yeah. um I don't know for definite but I'm pretty sure if you were to look at the stats when I played with him my passing would be so much higher mm -hmm. um, completion because when he is on the pitch he always makes the right angle for you he always wants it I remember I gave him one and I thought it was a bit of a hospital pass <laughs> and I said to him sorry I was like obviously you don't want to stitch yeah. up your, yeah. your mate and he goes don't worry about it like, I should deal with that Yeah. when I'm thinking not Great. one other person saying they're saying any chance so no he uh, has some ability his has the courage I think it would take courage to take the ball anywhere and um, and it's great to see him playing at Brighton in a, in a mm. top side yeah, but it shows you his mindset because he, he was out of the picture at Brighton yep. um, but clearly he's he's knuckled down worked hard and again like we all do we watch the Premier League down in England and every time I've, I've seen him put on the Brighton jersey he's been very good he's, he's an exceptional footballer yep. he, he can handle the ball um, and I really enjoy watching him play the manager's been saying, look, Scotland, we know we've not had a, a win for a little bit of time, but we're a good team. I think we're a good team, if, if, that's, the, if that's the short answer to, 
to, to, to a long question. I think I think we're a good team. I think we're over the last couple of years we've been very competitive. We lost out in the playoffs to the World Cup, but we had a very good qualifying campaign through the group. Uh, we managed to beat a pot one team there in Denmark. Uh, we've managed to beat a pot one team again in Spain in the the last qualifying group. So I think we've shown that we can compete with the bigger the bigger nations. Uh, and what we want to do is we want to do that more often because we've got a year this year where we're going to be playing against a lot of pot one teams, a lot of pot one stroke, really good pot two teams over the over the course of the whole year. So we we want to be competitive. We want to win matches. So yeah. Hopefully we can show that. And you were part of that, Stephen O'Donnell, just a couple was, of years ago. It was my last game, yeah. Yep, so Denmark, yeah. It was, was a very a special night, obviously. Yep. Sad it was my last, but that's um, that's football and, and it was an amazing night mm. to, to end on. I actually got my wee boy on the pitch, wasn't many, oh, and I got, yeah. got him down kind of touch side at the end, which was, was yep. a nice wee, wee touch. Did you think, did you know that was the last of, of your uh, international call-ups? I mean, you never know. You, but, not, you never yeah. know, right? But yeah, <laughs> I always felt with Scotland, it was a, it was maybe a ticking time bomb to a point. Like I, I knew there was, I was playing at Motherwell at the time, and Nathan was coming through at Rangers yeah. and, and getting his move, and and you know when players coming in, there, and Nathan comes in, and then aren't they're great footballers, are, and and yeah. and there comes a point. My dad needs to say, look, you're not getting called up anymore. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so look, it was, uh, but it was, yeah. it was, it was amazing that night. And and what's great is I think from. From since since my time being when I was in at Scotland, every camp, even under McLeish, there was improvement mm. off yeah. the part. Now I came in and I, I was obviously loving and being there, mm. but maybe the more experienced heads that had, had maybe seen maybe setups not as smooth, and it had just continually getting better and better. And that's I think a lot of goes down to Graham Jones, all the things off the pitch, chef, the facilities, always trying to get better. And I think maybe Andy Robertson is a big part to do with that is striving to make Scotland right. as good mm. off the park yep. because when you provide the best facilities it's about then that takes excuses away and gives you as players the best opportunity mm. to improve and, and thankfully I was able to be part of a team that managed to qualify and uh, again being able to do it again shows you that it's been working and, and long may, may it continue Barry, so important for the players I mean, when you went from Rangers to Scotland different days I suppose um, and sometimes Yeah, we, we would train at uh, Dumbarton's pitch yeah. That's where we were. We would stay at Cameron House yep. and then travel on the bus. But I, I, I think or I'm correct in saying that um, Scotland have moved back through to Glasgow, yeah. and they're obviously training at Lesser Hamden, which looks like an absolute bowling green. Yep. Um, and you want to give them the best facilities because yeah. then there's no excuses, Paul. Then players don't have an excuse. So, listen, since David Clark's come in and, and took the job, um, I, I think the difference he's made. Uh, has been unbelievable um, I enjoy watching Scotland now I enjoy after we finish this show straight home yep. get the dinner out yep. and then I'll sit and watch the, the game because <laughs> yeah. they're a good watch yep. Scotland mm. are a very good team we've got very good players and in my eyes we've got a very good manager what's for dinner as well what's Margaret got for you <laughs> I, I don't know yeah. I normally text her maybe a second yeah. down yeah, check but obviously I know. Kyle's up after yeah. his operation so all sorts are getting made just now so we'll be finishing yeah, sharp tonight I'm don't loving worry. it I'm so loving it yep yeah. we'll we'll Kyle up. coming on yeah, yeah. He's, he'll get the text to pick up the takeaway yeah. Yeah. Home and miss the start of the game <laughs> Sometimes he does it, he changes his mind. And for you, Stephen, of course, another baby. Congratulations. Uh, yeah. Thanks very much. Well, a... Your wife had the baby. Yes. I know, I've done a great yeah. job. <laughs> <laughs> so, baby number three and the uh, christenings tomorrow. Yep. Yep. Christenings tomorrow. So, it's, um, I was uh, getting nagged for, oh, I need to do this and yep. that. So, standard. So, <laughs> so, you said, hello, Dan, I'm off to go radio oh, to do the go radio football show with Barry Ferguson. She, yeah. said, she said, I'm looking for any excuse to get yeah. in the house. So, <laughs> anytime you need me in, I'm available. Even come and see us tonight. Two's great, yeah. three's a crowd. Right. Oh, I, I remember. Know I know. Mm -hmm. get described so much more. I went from man marking yeah. to zonal. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm struggling. <laughs> yeah. 08, 08, 17, 17, 700. Barry Ferguson and Stephen O'Donnell. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Pro. Property. Looking to sell property in Glasgow? Call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409. Let's go! Scotland Internationals here tonight. 70 caps between them, more than 70 caps. Barry Ferguson with us on a Friday night, the former Scotland captain, and Stephen O'Donnell, big part of the Scotland setup on the way to the Euros, Euros 2020, which of course, because of COVID happened in 2021, doesn't seem so long ago, but thankfully, it must have been strange, Stephen, as well. I mean, great moments, but you know, you mentioned playing at Wembley, uh, but just not the 
eighty thousand there would normally be it was what twenty twenty five thousand that night. Yeah, no, look, yeah. I think it was still pretty cool. The you seen all the fans that came down, and that only yeah. happened obviously because how easy it was to get get down to London. Yeah. And the, seeing those videos coming in in the morning, the game and stuff was 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 really special. But yeah, when you were out on the pitch, um, it would have been really nice to say you'd played at a full Wembley. Um, yep. But still, I'll, I'll take playing at Wembley full stop. So I'm not going. To, I'm not yeah. going to be too picky. Um, and then some of that, my my best friend didn't make it down because he got COVID. He was um, helping my my wife, him and his wife, for helping my wife for the kids, and uh, got COVID. And um, I so he was out of commission, which was pretty devastated. <laughs> Barry, you're one of the few that people that we know. Stephen mentioned it before, and you've played at both Wembleys. Yep, the old and the new. Which one do you prefer? If I'm being honest, I I, I preferred the old Wembley. Um, why? Why? I, I just I mean it was like obviously we were playing England. We 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 won the game. Yep. Uh, one 0 Um, I, I just thought the the atmosphere was unbelievable, Paul. Um, old fashioned stadium, yeah. and I know there was a, a similar to what Hamden is. There's a bit of gap be yeah. behind the goals, but the atmosphere I experienced that night was was unbelievable. If I'm being honest, um, and then obviously played at the the new Wembley. Um, a couple of times which uh, is a fantastic stadium but if you're asking me I prefer the older one the Twin Towers yep, at Wembley correct, is yeah. that your favourite stadium to play at? Um, or to experience? I, it's got to be up there mm. got to be up there the old the old Wembley sure especially was. when you beat England that, that, that makes, it even, yeah. <laughs> makes it even better <laughs> a point yeah. felt good so yeah. I can only imagine what a win would have been you're the second person on go today who's played at Wembley because uh, Majur was on this morning, the man who organised uh, Live Aid along with Bob Geldof. So they played there into 1985, before you were born. Um, and the old baths as well, remember yeah, the old I, bath? Everybody yeah. used to jump in uh, together. Yeah, it was an old school stadium. Fantastic. So That some, was the last yeah. game there actually. Was it? Is yeah. that right? Yeah. yeah. Wow. That was the last game it was played. Some night. Stephen, what's your favourite stadium that you've played in so far? Um. The new Wembley's going to say, yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, like I, I think yeah. to be fair, one of the one of the yeah. one of the ones I I, I, I think it's really impressive is Ibrox. The three tiers. Mm -hmm. See when you go out and you turn round yep. and wave. I don't know who I'm waving at. I was going to say who waves, <laughs> <laughs> but you're looking at, at the stadium. The three tier, pretty impressive. Yeah. Um, I love my my debut was in Peru, yeah, and um, and that stadium was was only forty thousand, but there was like chaos trying to get tickets right. for it for the yeah. Peru. It was a before the World Cup and uh, big send off, and the atmosphere was amazing. So pr probably that that for the atmosphere and probably Ibrox is is pretty impressive. And Stephen O'Donnell, um, Alec McLeish was a big part of your uh, international career. Alex knows him; um, he knows Barry so well. What was he like to to work under? No, look, he was great for me. I think um, anyone to 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 see me and 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 select me from being at Kilmarnock, obviously. Yeah. Steve Clark had to have ourselves um, firing all cylinders mm. at the time, um, but to select me and, and to play me in the first game, I think himself. I know that um, James McFadden um, spoke very highly of me to him as well, which would, would always help. And um, being in his coaching staff, so I think in these things you just need to appreciate somebody having the belief in you, I suppose, yeah. to, mm. to go and play. And I think that's the biggest thing that, that Steve Clark then then kind of gave me as well, and he. Uh, selected me was belief I think when somebody mm -hmm. believes in you and I'm sure that's probably something that, that Mota has give, given Lewis mm -hmm. again a foreign manager a big name like that mm -hmm. and, and he's going I'm, I think you're good enough it's, it, it can't do anything other than make you feel good and make you play better it's a confidence game isn't it as well and if somebody really believes in you it must make a big difference oh it makes a huge yep. difference no doubt about it and uh, listen I love playing under him I played under him on a couple of uh, three occasions. Sorry, I said a couple of for getting the signing for the Blues for Birmingham um, as well. Yeah, I had a lot of time. I had a brilliant relationship with him. Um, he trusted me, and as Stephen says, when a manager trusts you, he gets the best out of you. Enjoying life at Motherwell because obviously Kilmarnock, um, and then we thought when you were playing for Scotland, then maybe England would be calling. But it was COVID times, and that probably affected things. But at Motherwell, it's turned out to be a, a terrific few years. Yeah, no, look, I, I think I'd have loved to have an opportunity when I was younger to, to try the championship. Um, but it, it didn't come. And I've loved my four, four years now at Motherwell. And yeah, um, yeah. and it's been a roller coaster. Mm -hmm. But I've loved it. Played in Europe. Um, got some last last minute top six. It's, uh, it's certainly been uh, eventful. I've loved it. And the, and the manager has been brilliant for me. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got absolute no complaints enjoying it hopefully 
I think maybe top six might be a wee bit too mm-hmm. too much to ask now after the result of the weekend. Um, not saying that VAR had much to do with it, but it was uh, cruel, <laughs> wasn't it? I mean, we spoke about it Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Barry, what would you say if uh, Stephen missed it the other night? I the just, Lennon Miller goal. Uh, yeah, 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 it just baffles me yeah. why that wasn't given as a goal. Mm. Uh, and to be honest, Willie Collum's going over to the the monitor, and I'm thinking, you know, what's going to happen here? He's going to give it as a goal, mm. but wow, and he didn't. I, I don't get it. I like the fact that the club have complained about it and sent a, a video to the authorities to say... It's frustrating. It's, yeah. it's frustrating. That would have been a big point. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, listen, that would have made me go on and win the game. You never know what could happen, but it's frustrating for clubs. It's not just Mullow, it's every single club, I think, mm-hmm. if you ask them. They, they've got a real frustration with uh, VAR at this moment in time. Stephen? What can you say without getting in trouble? No, look, I, look, I think it's just frustrating. I think that's yeah. the be- best way to put it in. I think the refs are in a really, really tough spot. They're the ones I feel the worst yeah. for because whenever you're on the on the pitch and the decision goes against you, or or for you and the other sides, the other teams giving them it, the ref gets it. But a lot of the time, it's not really like when Willie Collum gets called over. The pressure to mm-hmm. to to stay with that decision because it's seen by someone and recommended. Mm-hmm. It's not a job I would be be looking for. The the pressure and the and the kind when you're called over in the full stadiums of zoom, yep. zoned in on you. It's it's. Big decisions. They're taken away from the referee and, and allowing the referee just to get on. They'll get it wrong occasionally, but they got more right. Yeah, no, yeah. look, I, I, again, I think it becomes difficult. I think yeah. the man... I think if we... <laughs> could we go back to just accepting that referees would make decisions that were wrong and they were wrong because they just made mistakes? Mm-hmm. But then now the telly's involved and you're going, well, we shouldn't be making the mistakes, but we still yeah. can are. So it just kind of throws it all up in there a wee bit. It's subjective, isn't it? Some of it is. As, and, and do you know what? I watch the game, I'm sure you do, Steve. On a Friday night, the Championship games, no yeah. VAR involved, yeah. and it's flown. There, there is mistakes, referees make, yeah. make mistakes, um, that there may be a, a couple of dodgy tackles, but listen, that's the football that I remember I really enjoyed. And I was all for bringing VAR in, but I've got to be honest with you, I'm not enjoying it. I think as long as we're striving to make it better, mm-hmm. I'm still not. I think it is a good thing. Mm-hmm. but as long as we are seeing there is issues and trying to get it better because England's still having problems and the, the money they have and spend yeah. on it mm-hmm. so I'm not as long as the process is still ongoing and we're not thinking it's it's the right decisions because mm-hmm. that's what I sometimes think the, the the hierarchies believe that they are the right decisions and a lot I just struggle to, to see it that's the voice of Stephen O'Donnell he's here as well it's not just his voice he's with me Paul Cooney and Barry Ferguson and you can speak to Stephen and Barry if you dial 0808 17 17 700 what do you make of the I see in England they're not happy about the new kit on the night when I think we'll wear the new Scotland strip tonight I would imagine did you like the Scotland the new strip Stephen I like the new one but yeah. I don't love it I <laughs> love the the wet, the one yeah. for the oh yeah the so, International, yeah. the, what was it, yeah. 50? Yeah, no, 150, 150 years, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah, that was stunning, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. That was yeah. one of the nicest strips I've seen. Barry, Very plain and basic, yeah. that's what I like. Yeah. That's what I, no, that's why I liked that anniversary strip. But when the, Barry played, that's how they all were. Yeah, right? exactly. <laughs> yeah, now they're all singing yeah. and dancing. And somebody's warm up tops, <laughs> you see, <laughs> as well, oh, yeah. um, are unbelievable. But the new one, I think it's okay. Uh, but I just like nice, plain strips. There, you've heard it here. Right, who are the places up for grabs? That is the question that the manager was asked today. Yeah, I, I think I said that not too long ago. There's, there's always places up for grabs because you don't know what's going to happen. Coming into this this week, we've got a number of players that are not here that would have been here, but they're injured. So there's nothing going to change on that front over the next six, seven weeks. Players will get injured. That happens in football. Hopefully they don't get too too many injuries and I hope hopefully there's no there's no big injuries that causes somebody to fall out but you're probably looking at a, a pool of 27 28 players that I have to narrow down to 23 so there are decisions to be to be made for sure 100 percent Stephen O'Donnell that's one of the toughest things when the manager has to say to you I'm sorry you're not on the plane to Germany no I can I can only imagine it must be be a tough I think tough for both parties I don't mm, think yeah. every manager will understand what it means to the, the players where Steve Clark might have an advantage is that he's received it. So maybe he will be slightly more caring, if that would be the right word. But I think it's at that point they're all top players and they know they'll have dealt with uh, difficult situations. It's just it's I hope it's not injuries. I think mm-hmm. injuries is the one that really kind of upsets you because it's there's nothing you can do about it. But if if you just believe someone's better than you, then that's that's football. 
and that's what Barry said the other night in the show. You know, there's still we hope and there's no injuries, but there could be. Yeah, you, you never know. Listen, there's still a couple of months to go to the the, the season ends, um, but he, he's got a a few tough decisions, I think, to to make. But he's an experienced manager. Look, Stephen knows him better than my, m- myself. But I just like the way he carries himself, Stevie Clark, and and listen, I think it'll be tough, but. He's an honest, he, he strikes me as very honest uh, and he'll explain the reasons why they're, they're not going to be chosen for the, 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 the squad. Um, and it'll be tough on the players but look, I'm sure if the player gets that disappointment I'm sure he'll still back his, his manager and, the, and, and sorry the decision. But there's still time between now and then but under three months to go now until yeah. what the 14th of June the opening game. Will you be there do you think Stephen? Will you, I know you've got three young ones so... Yeah no I'm not too sure to be honest yeah. I think um, uh, Mother will start back in the 18th. Right. Yeah. So certainly if, if it's getting earlier and earlier. I know. Pre season. I know. We've got a game on the nineteenth, haven't we? As well. So yeah. I think if I was to if I was to make it over, it'd be the, for the first one. Yeah. And then by all accounts that's the most expensive one as well. So yeah. if anyone has any comms going, I'm more than happy to take them and I'll, I'll make my way over. But uh, yeah, look I, I obviously I don't know where I'll be next season, so try and just uh Oh you all right. contract no, contract, yep. So just try and uh, Again, I can go all summer at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> but I hope that's going to change. All right, yeah. I hope that's going to change. I know. It's tough though, isn't it? Um, I didn't realise that you were out of contract. In I the know, summer. that's just yeah. part and parcel of football. Of course. There's, no, yeah. there's, um, right, there's no shying away from it. Sure. It's, uh, it, listen, you've got a long way to go in your career, but people don't realise that, don't they, not Barry? People think that it must just go on. You play for Motherwell, you play for Rangers, whatever it is, it goes on and on. But And maybe it will. It may well do. You've been in good form recently. I appreciate it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 But it's uh it's tough. Fans don't realise it for players how precarious it can be. You're one slip away from, you know, a bad game and a bad injury. Yeah, well in terms of Stephen's situation, he's out of contract now. Somebody he's playing just now, um and touch wood, you want to be healthy until the end of the season and obviously it's up to Stephen what he's wanting to do. I'm sure Mother will I think would be crazy not to they try and offer them something um, but I'm sure if they don't there'll be other clubs that will certainly be interested in an experienced player I agree a lot of people are on saying that. good to hear you on Stephen including Mark Doyle so Mark's on and no doubt Stephen will be on as well and Kieran and 0808 17 17 700 or join the conversation at Go Football Show there's an extra edge in training so far this week because of the fact two games in the next few days and also the Euros. Fortunately, they're not, they're not kicking each other. Uh, they're competitive. Listen, it's, uh, this group of players are always competitive when they come away. They, they want to do well. I've always spoken highly of them. They, they want to do well every time they come away to represent their country. So that's what we're doing. Obviously, there's a little bit extra edge because we're approaching a, a major tournament and they all want to be involved in it. And what about the team we're up against tonight? Holland. Good team, good players. Uh, I think similar level to Spain. They're always competitive. The Nations League finals last year, they were in the, the last four. They're, they're always there. The Dutch team, always there. Good players. Uh, change of manager not, not too long ago. So obviously preparing for the tournament as well. We expect a tough game. Uh, and, th- and they have some players who will grab the headlines and whatever, but many good players. We played the Dutch team before we went to the last European tournament. It was a good match. It was competitive. And that's what we're looking for again. Just looking at the Dutch team, Cody Gakpo, he could well, he may well play tonight. Could be up against Kieran Tierney. Yeah, and listen, delighted to see him back in the squad. Yeah. I, I don't know Stephen's thoughts on it, but me personally, when I look at the squad, I've said before there's a hell of a lot of quality in that squad. But for me, I think Kieran Tierney, Scotland's most important player. I do. I think he's vital for the the team. He's obviously suffered a an injury this season but he's been back playing now I think for the last three or four weeks and I'm sure Stevie Clark will be absolutely delighted that he's back fit and hopefully he stays fit until obviously the, the team go away to the Euros Stephen I fit Tiern Kearney's a massive massive player for Scotland I think he was missing for the first game against Czech Republic mm-hmm. and I just feel it's a, a whenever he would play in the back three it's, it's a different proposition mm-hmm. and it's, it's a back three is great when you're sitting in and, and passing it about but see when you're maybe a bit more on the front foot I feel Tierney just slots in beautifully stepping in with the ball mm-hmm. him and Robertson over the time have, have got a great relationship the way they kind of just mix and match and um, yeah I think he is a, a big miss mm-hmm. um, 
I don't want to say he's the, the, the biggest player because obviously you've got lots of players that are really important to the squad and the team but he is a, a top player and uh, certainly one I think was missed against Czech Republic I'm allowed to say that I'm retired exactly he's yeah, still playing I know, I know. <laughs> he balanced that quite well didn't he no yeah, no listen yeah. but uh, I, I just uh, I, I can't believe listen it's my old teammate Mikel Arteta as well it's the Arsenal manager yeah. I, I just find it strange why he allowed them to go and, and loan I'd but, love to have been a fly in the wall for yep. that because he was player of the year yep, yeah exactly the year before. I remember watching him now he's had some injuries mm-hmm. but, but even if you're say injury prone if that's what Arteta maybe levels at him is he not still a top player when he's fit to yeah. be and then playing yeah, top, people out of position ahead of him I couldn't see it yeah for me he gets in the Arsenal team all day long and, and you know the Arsenal fans loved him Absolutely. Um, and every sure. time yeah. you watched Arsenal as we all do we, as I said yeah. previous we all watched the Premier League every time I seen Arsenal play Kieran Tierney was probably Arsenal's best player best mm-hmm. player yep. he was, and he was, yep. was talking going to Real Madrid mm-hmm. at one point yeah. yep. and he's less than a year ago yeah, yeah. That's, that's, again football changes quickly it goes it goes both ways it's all about opinions yeah um, and listen there's obviously something went on but he's went over to Spain he's went into a different environment a different league um, obviously suffered a, a bad injury but now the most important thing is he's back playing and he's back playing with Scotland and hopefully um, we'll see him start tonight and, and show really uh, how important and how good he is The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property Get your home ready for the markets with help from their team of experts Let's go Yep, the weekend starts here. It's a different kind of weekend. No premiership tomorrow, but it's international duty tonight. Holland against Scotland, just less than three months away from the Euros. 0808 08, 17 17 700 if you want to speak to Barry Ferguson and Stephen O'Donnell. But loads to get through in the next hour or so, including the team news coming in and everyone talking about whether or not it's going to be Lauren Shankland. Uh, but Barry, you think he may well get his chance tonight? Yeah, I think it's an ideal opportunity to pitch him in against um, a quality opposition, Paul. Um, I think this season he's... Um, look, we all know he's a natural goal scorer, but I just think his overall game's improved. His link-up play, his hold-up play, and I think um been given, obviously, the captaincy. Eh? I think it's made him even better as well. So I would like to see him get the opportunity, but look, we'll find out probably in the next... However, if that's going to be the, the, the case. Stephen, there was so much chat about him in January, but would he go to Rangers, maybe Celtic, or would he be down south? But he stayed at Hearts and no big bid seemed to come in for him. Would you surprise? That... Yeah, look, I think I'm surprised whenever someone scores as many goals and, yeah. and goal mm-hmm. scorers are the, the most valuable people at a club. Um, what I would say is it's, it's positive for Hearts. I think it's also positive for him that he's definitely going to be playing. Mm-hmm. So if he wants to be in the Scotland squad, he, he does need to be playing, and I think that gives him a right good chance. Um, touching on tonight, I think if he, he knows what Dykes and Adams can do, I think why not give Shanklin an opportunity and see if he is good enough. I know Jacob Brown's injured, a couple of other boys have been mentioned. So if you're going to try and pick your best team, you're making probably three strikers are going to come. Let's see see how he does. And and I seen him. Um, against Russia he, he came on against Russia yeah. over in Russia and it was something I always just thought he was like a, I don't as a, as a player you can have yeah. really good goal scorer mm-hmm. kind of like the Lewis Ferry he's, mm-hmm. he's physical he's got you see maybe parts of his game see against Russia his hold up play right. and these big brutes yep. was incredible yeah. and that was a couple of years mm-hmm. ago and he has as, as Barry said got, got better and better since mm-hmm. you said that number his hold up play as well as his out and out striking ability yeah, I think yeah. since he's come back from obviously Stinton Belgium wasn't ideal yeah. um, it didn't work out which happens as a footballer but I think since he's come back to Hearts um, and then he's had that added responsibility as I mentioned um, taking over from Craig Gordon as the, the club captain I think that's br- brought his game on even more but then see the other two she Adams and Lyndon Dykes I think they've done a brilliant job for Stevie Clark they have I, yep, mean, I, I, yep. I think they have they, they worked their backsides off mm-hmm. the only thing you can maybe say is do they score enough goals um, at international level but I like the two of them I, I, I really do but I think tonight go and give Shanklin the opportunity because um, I think this season um, he's been he's been excellent yeah, perhaps best striker in the league apart from um, thinking I don't want to offend anyone at, at your club um, but I think yeah. Theo Bear's scoring a few goals ha- I know away with Canada yeah. as well aye 
I know. Li- listen, that, that's one player again. It just shows you in football. St. Johnson last year yeah. couldn't score. I don't think he even scored a goal for St. Johnson. He came to Motherwell, and sometimes that that's what happens, Paul. You find somewhere that you're comfortable. It suits you. And could, um, be the ma- could, the ma- could be the manager, could yep. be a whole yeah. host of things. Yeah, yep. just it looks to me if he's settled down and, and listen, he looks the part this season. He was unlucky last weekend, wasn't he? Yeah, no, yeah. He, he's he's got everything. Yeah. This, this, the sheer size of him is intimidating. <laughs> and then he's got good feet for yep. this. Again, you maybe associate these big guys, big just target man, but he probably target is the one thing he maybe could be better at. I don't mean yep. to, but he's he's got all the tools to, to be a Why is he, is he same height as you? What you uh, six, six, two. Six, five. Six, five. Five, six, wow. six, six four six five and he's double the width of me <laughs> he reminds me in training when I was just brushing me to the side and five holes you know. is it going to be competitive tonight and Tuesday here's Steve Clark. trying to improve we're not that level we know we're not that level because we lost both of those games but we were competitive in both games the circumstances around the games are a little bit different and we had just beaten Cyprus away to get to 15 points we felt in a good place England came to Hamden played very well on the night I thought I thought England were good on the night we didn't reach the standards that we want to reach so we lost that one the French game was a, was a different one again we'd, we'd just qualified having watched Spain uh, beat Norway and we had a good night to be honest we enjoyed ourselves a little bit and then we went to play one of the best teams in the world two days later so if you actually watch the game against France we, we, we had some good moments in the game we, we showed that we can be competitive against these teams that's what we want to show tomorrow night against a, a very good Dutch side we want to be competitive we want to show that we're improving and obviously we want a positive result as well What's it like in a friendly though Barry? Is it, how different is it? Well it is different from a, a competitive game but listen this is an opportunity for guys to, to put themselves um and we had a chance to start them. Um, the first game against against Germany. And listen, every, every game, you get into every game one to win, Paul. Um, no doubt about it. And the guys know, listen, they're, they're top players. They know what's at stake um, and what's ahead of them in the next couple of months. And that's going to the Euros. And every single one of the players that are in that squad I want to be in that starting 11 in the 14th of June against Germany. Stephen? For you, how did you find it, the difference? Or I guess when you put on the dark blue jersey, it must be really special. Yeah, no, look, I think every every game for myself or Scotland, you were doing everything you could to be in the next game or the next squad. I think maybe, I'm not saying they will be, because these guys are top professionals and and and, and are there in, in, in merit and their ability. And you may be thinking, now are they looking one eye going, well, we've got big maybe ends to the seasons for our clubs and we want to be fit for the Euros so if there's may, maybe if there's a wee 50-50 are you going to pull out I, I, I don't know I hope not because it'll make a better game if they don't but look I think there's a lot at stake for both sides I think um, Holland as well so so it'll be it'll be a good game I think um, and, and, and I'm looking forward to seeing what Steve Clark is, is, is trying out to see if it works or not What was it like when you got your first cap so it was over at Peru obviously yep. far from home but wh- how did you find out you were going to be playing? Um, just get, get kind of told in the meeting um, we'd flew over well I was a late call up to the squad so at first I thought I might not even get a minute <laughs> so you go over you're excited it was kind of like a I don't want to say a B squad but there was there was a lot of uh, new faces yeah. and I was one of them and uh, go over there and some new, new setting new yeah. setup for me different and it was pretty, pretty special got, got told I'm playing which is amazing I also thought that that would be the only game because we were told that there was going to be two different teams so I thought right brilliant not br- well, 90 minutes I'm good I'm yeah. not going to be able to play against Mexico anyway yeah. in four three days time so we fly over to, to Mexico and I'm starting again <laughs> and I go I'm not and you got I don't know if you've ever played in, in Mexico as yeah. Azteca yeah. high altitude mm. yep I couldn't breathe mm. yeah. I was thank God I was mm-hmm quite fit I was gubbed in the Peruvians and <laughs> the and the Mexicans they moved the ball so easily yeah. and so smooth and I'm charging a bit trying yeah. my best it was, it was some experience <laughs> did you play in Mexico no. any time no. no yeah been in holiday a few times yeah yeah, yeah I've enjoyed <laughs> it <laughs> I was there for the World Cup but obviously didn't play but I was reporting on it and uh, I remember that with the training the high altitude so for the players now, and all that I am yeah, there's no point yeah not bad for that no it was in 1986 yeah the, against Mexico I remember watching it yeah 
Um, but we didn't I don't remember them, watching played, No, no. <laughs> but we played in Mexico. We weren't playing right. against them, but yeah, it was phenomenal. It was, did you? It was, uh, I, I was there covering it. Yeah, the game. We did, did you the, the have games. any impact with the. Could you um, feel the No, not really. No, it didn't really affect the drinking. I mean, sorry, <laughs> but yeah, no. Uh, listen, we were always. Uh, you're always just checking what's out happening, training, and all the rest of it, and how the fans were doing. No, it, it, it was magnificent. Long time ago, Mexico City, great people, and terrible poverty in Mexico, and great it's wealth as well. Him. You know, it's just it's uh, side by side in in uh, in the same city, but great people. Yeah, and let's hope we're back at the World Cup as well. Be really important, and that'll be the next thing we'll be talking about. We're talking about Holland tonight against Scotland, and looking forward to it. We'll have the team news in the uh, the near future. At your own club, I see Blair Spittles being mentioned that he could be on his way pre-contract, maybe going to Hearts for next season. Yeah, no, I've seen that. Look, I think um, Blair will definitely not be short, so short of mm. suitors because he's been exceptional. Um, this season he's been brilliant. And last season he was very good as well in mm. a, a, a maybe a more turbulent um, season. So look, he um, obviously would be great if he stayed at Motherwell, but I think if, if he's got interest from other clubs and, and he was to choose to sign, I don't think... End of anything but well wishes for him. Um, somebody that's fit, ever present, is something that's mm-hmm. maybe doesn't happen too often now yeah. in, in, in teams. And he's always fit. I think he's missed one game this season. Um, and he, and he's, his stats, they put a thing in social media. You know, Mother was quite busy with social media sometimes. Indeed. And it was <laughs> ridiculous. Yeah. It's got all the kind of gold contributors, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. It was really good for a, for a centre mid as well. You like him, Barry? Yeah, he's became yeah. a big player for Motherwell. Um, really impressive when when I've watched Motherwell this this season. Um, and when a player of that quality is out of contract, you, you can see why Hearts are, are sniffing about him. Um, and what what age, age is he now? 28? 27, 28, yeah. 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 It's a short career. People mm-hmm. have got to obviously remember that. Look, Motherwell's budget, I would imagine, is not the biggest in the Premier League. Yeah. Um, so... Look, it'll be a, a, a big miss, a big loss, sorry, should I say, for, for Murrow. And if it is Hearts, I think they're getting a very good midfielder. I see James Penrice. I like Liv- him. I like him way. as well yeah. at Livingston. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they've struggled this season, no doubt about it. I think they're going to struggle, Paul. Uh, we've spoke about it yeah. on Wednesday night. I think they are, they, they are going to be going down. And he is the one player that has stood out for, for Livingston. I think I think it's clever from Hearts if, if they have signed these two mm-hmm. players. I think it's a clever way to do your business quite early. Get players that you believe are good enough for the league. I think both of them undoubtedly are. Mm-hmm. Um, and then you think think you can maybe implement them in your system and your style. It's kind of what I, I thought possibly Celtic or Rangers would have done with the likes of Shankland or Miofsky mm-hmm. when they were scoring all the goals. You can get these guys for, for a fraction of the price you, you spend on yeah. the on the kind of the, the the unknown names that come from different countries. And I just thought one of them would have taken him and taken one of them in January, but this is clever from Hearts. Indeed, we've said it a few times, haven't we? We thought they would both go, Shankland and Dan Majofsky. Yeah, and yeah. we've spoken at previous guys that like, can back even further. Yeah. My nephew Lewis, Lewis. Yeah. Uh, you look at Josh Doig yeah. at Hibs, you look at Hickey even before that. Um, sometimes I think we are a bit ignorant. I think we've got good quality in, in our league. We've got a lot of good players. Um, and these two boys that we've mentioned, Blair Spittle and, and James Penrice, have certainly stood out for both Mono and Livingston. They certainly have. I see your club, Motherwell, have got a new CEO today, Brian Caldwell, has been announced. So he was at um, St Mirren and he was down south as well. He was down at Shrewsbury, I yeah. think. I've seen it come out on in, in, in social media today. Yeah, no, look, I think it's good. I think players want clarity from managers. It's touching on, I'm, I'm currently doing my B licence and that was a big word, was clarity. You want to have mm-hmm. kind of clear message of what, what, what's getting looked for. And I think that's the same at a club and I think that's what... Um, and the chief executive and hopefully brings that. OK, back with Barry and Stephen soon. The news is coming in a few moments. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Get in touch with the team and they'll offer expert advice on effectively presenting your property. Let's go! When it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property, our aim is to get you the best possible results. And how do we do this? Simple, by giving you the best possible advice. From expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market. At Go Green Property, it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible. Sell your home with Go Green Property. Call Glasgow 374 0409. Wow, thank you, Jess. That news just broke into the world. 
uh, announced at six o'clock. She did that interview, uh, Kate, with uh, the BBC. So that has just come in. And of course, we wish them all the very best and hope for a full recovery for Kate, the Princess of Wales. So we'll get football and always, Barry, at these moments we have to, you know, change. Life is so important and we wish her well. There's been so much speculation and uh, people need to give them a, a break. And we now know why we haven't seen her for some time. She's been very brave there, speaking just a few moments ago, recorded an interview with the BBC. And cancer has touched so many people. Um, all of us have been touched by it in our family. So that really is obviously round the world the news going that Kate has spoken, that she's been suffering from cancer and she's spoken about it just a few moments ago we wish her all the very best that's why you need to enjoy every day Barry isn't it as well yeah yep. life for yep. in, enjoying and, and you've, you've summed it up perfectly we've obviously had loved ones that have went yep. through it um, my mum went through it four or five years ago yep. um, gladly um, she's fine now um, but listen that was well handled well handled there with, with Jess well it's so personal for everybody you mm. know it's affected you know, every family. Yep. And uh, Stephen, we go back to the football, but, you know, we care about people in this station and we hope that everything is okay there. And uh, um, they live their lives in the public eye and people say, you know, oh, it's privileged or whatever, but my goodness, you're, everything is scrutinised. And we now understand why we haven't seen her for some time. I'm not asking you um, oh. to talk about you're a family man and uh, a loving father. No, you just look at... Yeah. She's the mother of a young family. I think it's... That doesn't resonate with everyone. I think it's um doesn't matter what you you think. I think it's just a, a shame and, and I hope she, she she makes a recovery. Yeah, we do indeed. Thanks, Jess, for coming in there. It came in just as we were about to go to the news. And you've got a big day tomorrow, which enjoy these days, as Barry and I were saying. <laughs> uh, hopefully a Scotland good performance tonight, but a christening tomorrow. Oh yeah. well, definitely. I think yeah. um take a take a good result tonight and then a a, a, a sunny day tomorrow yeah. I think today I think today's weather will be a bit disappointing but um but no look hopefully all goes well tomorrow uh, not too many opportunities to to see the family and, and it, hopefully it's a it's a good day yep skiving tonight but <laughs> exactly. I know yeah. I know yeah. <laughs> I've missed bedtime hopefully yeah. I'm having some right? traffic yeah. make sure there's some traffic yeah. at quarter past yeah. seven <laughs> what age are the wee ones so, um, so four, six weeks yeah six Sorry. weeks um a wee girl's turning three in the first of April uh -huh. Yep. and then uh, my wee boy's uh, four he's going to school in August and my wee girl's going to nursery oh. so I thought I was in the, the yeah. I was. I thought I was in the the verge of completing yeah. it at yeah. that point but now I'm back back in the mire nothing like it though Barry is there yeah. Yeah. no listen yeah. I am no it's brilliant listen yeah. I've uh, my kids are all grown up now mm. and even just spending time um, with, with the three of them there's nothing better Um Hard work when they're young, yep. don't get mm -hmm. us wrong. And that's down to my, my good lady, Margaret. Yep. She, I was, it was all right for me because I was away playing football yep. in hotels. She had to do all the, the hard graft. I got away with quite a lot. Um, but listen, I've grew up to be respectable um, young human beings and, and that's all you want for your for your kids and three of them are doing really well that's the most important thing it's brilliant you couldn't really go in and say to Walter Smith sorry Gaffer I was up <laughs> three times during the night or did you ever try that? no no no, no I wouldn't have <laughs> got away with that no no Dick chance Advoca. no chance no. no chance big Alec McLeish but the, the no. night before games I always uh, listen you know how hard that is yeah. with, with, with kids they're so hi hyperactive and listen they got up during the night but listen that's part of being a a father, uh, you need to go up and, and try and help. I hope Margaret's not listening here because your phone and say never yeah. help one hey, single come on, bit. Margaret. <laughs> I've got a message pop up <laughs> saying he was hopeless. <laughs> oh eight oh eight seventeen seventeen seven hundred. The um, merits of uh, parenthood and how you look after <laughs> the kids. Uh, it's really important. I mean, short career as well. You know, football. You work hard. The riches can be there, or the wages can be good, yep. but it goes over in a flash. You miss it? out on yeah. some important things, like yep. their first yep. day at school. I mm. miss because I was away, um, and school plays, first game at football, all that sort of stuff. Some first dancing show, mm -hmm. dancing show. So, listen, at the end of the day, as your job, you have to go and play. But that, that's the things that you kind of you miss out, and then now when they're a bit older, you try and spend a bit more time with them, um, but. One thing they do is they cost you more as they get older. <laughs> Mind you, you were spotted today at David Lloyd in Hamilton, so you're there with the kids? Yeah, yeah. no, I was there. Yeah. My wee boy was in nursery, so I went yeah. with uh, my wife and, yeah. the, and the two younger ones. And 
just trying to again you're wanting a bit of a breather yeah. and I was actually thankfully I was having a nice healthy lunch uh, I was getting yeah. some poached eggs but my wife she's breastfeeding and she's eating like a like a horse so yeah. she's uh, <laughs> wanting banana loaf she's wanting this she's wanting that yeah and obviously, I need to oblige and go home yeah. and make her a lunch as well. So it was a it was it's a good day. And you need to get a win then, maybe yeah, next weekend uh, to get the bonus. Hundred percent. Yeah, huge game next weekend, isn't it? We're going to talk Scotland again in a moment or two. But Motherwell St Mirren, that's some game next Saturday. Yeah, no, look, I think it's um, we're in a wee bit of a maybe a precarious position. I think if you, if you would, yeah, I think you definitely want a couple more wins just to ease the ease the the, the negative side to it. And if we were to get them in the next two games, you never know what could happen in the last one against Hibs. So, look, I think it's been a, a really up and down season. I think um, we've got um, had got a wee bit of form there um, after being in a bad spell, and mm-hmm. and we're hoping we're over it, over it. And then obviously um, the game of the weekend against Aberdeen, we we, we had probably the bit of the ball and, and and had a few good chances, but did we do enough to come back? Possibly not. Mm-hmm. But I think a draw if we get the goal. I think it could be a different game. Yeah. Goals change games, and, and sadly we didn't get it. That's what you asked earlier. You can never tell. We'll never know now. But sometimes you get that momentum. Yeah, mm. exactly. And and listen, I, I think uh, it was a, a genuine goal. It should have stood, mm. in, in my opinion. Look, everybody's got different views on it, but my view was um, that was certainly a, a goal uh, from Lennon Miller. And you never know what could happen. It could end up getting a be a good point or. Motherwell could have been on and, and got a vital three points. Robin's been on asking you, he's a Motherwell fan, what happened at Morton in the Cup? And is that a regret? I mean, it clearly will be for the team this season, but it's never easy down there. Yeah, no, I think the, the most frustrating thing is that that's the last two years. Um, it was Wraith Rovers last year and then this year Morton. And, and again, you you bring a big following, we brought a big following to Wraith, we bring a big following to Morton. And, and the manager had had, had his set up had it there, there was no we talked earlier about excuses there were no excuses we knew what it was going to be it was a Friday night and we just we just didn't perform um, I think we I don't want to say bullied because mm. to admit that but we, they, they did they, they fought and we maybe should have done it more and, and we just we, we were off it and I think when that happens against a, a side that was hungry they were in a really good uh, vein of form at the time um, they they, they, they they just won. They won, and, and deservedly so. We huffed and we puffed um, in the second half, but but just couldn't do enough. And it was it was disappointing. I think I would love a, a run. I, I've actually never played it a handing um, for club, so it's Have something. That, no, no, never. Wow. Always quarter final. Yeah. A lot of close quarter finals, ones we deserve to win. But um, I would love to have that in my career and, and haven't managed to do it. I think maybe Barry's got a few more experiences than me. <laughs> you certainly have five Scottish Cup winners' medals. Yep, five League Cup. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, but, but going on in that game, I, I remember going back after the show and, and watching it. And one thing, obviously, watching the championship games on a Friday night, I know it was the Scottish Cup, but you think to yourself, Mother, I've got to stand up to this. Mm. And they didn't. Yeah. They didn't. I thought Morton overran them, overpowered them, which surprised me. Obviously, they made a few changes, but I, I thought at the end of the day, there was no excuses. I thought Morton thoroughly deserved to, to get through into the next round. Stephen, the surprise this season has been Aberdeen. I would think um, we certainly all feel that here. Do you agree? I mean, they started the season. I mean, they were in the League Cup final in December, and then it went into free fall. Barry Robson's gone. Neil Warnock, it didn't work out. But have you been surprised by the Dons? I've uh, been surprised with obviously where they are in the league. They're a massive club, a mm. uh, massive fan base. I was there as a kid, and I was there for a year full time, mm. and yeah. that's where I, that's where, where it was up there for a year full time. Six or sixteen moved away. Um, probably struggled with that realised yeah. I was maybe more of a mummy's boy than, than I like to let on did you learn the language the Doric I, le- I learned it <laughs> yeah. I, I can yeah. Yeah. <laughs> fit like yeah. in that yeah. but, uh, but you can own about a sec <laughs> who's your dues for a bit for a bit nah, yeah. so look like I enjoyed it um, yeah. uh, but it was a, an experience at 16 moving away from my family but yeah no the massive club uh, they deserve a, a, a team that's in the top six and competing and um, it's disappointing if not but again I think the European stuff maybe affected them at the start of the season mm-hmm. a lot of games and you can kid on that you've got a big enough squad but if you've got your every team your top teams if they're starting 11 it's their best team and yeah you can kind of bring one or two in but when you maybe get a few injuries you start to miss them and, and I think that's what's happened and it's just snowballed it has snowballed hasn't it for Aberdeen just against yeah, them and, and you yeah. think of the game next weekend yeah. Aberdeen Ross yeah. County yeah. at Pitodry. Mm-hmm. Um but I'll go back to it. I thought they were a bit hasty in, in 
letting Barry Robson go I thought he deserved a bit more time because at that stage in January I don't think they were threatened with relegation I know they were a bit up and down he got them to a, a cup final as well and then I, I, I mean it's been proven that it's the, the wrong decision so they, they're in a fight they're in a fight Aberdeen I think um, you could maybe even say a bit hasty even going back to McInnes mm-hmm. when they were the, ah, yeah, when sure. they kind of left it was I mean you think forward. of the job Derek McInnes done there and obviously they went for Stephen Glass. It's not worked. Jim Goodwin, not worked. Barry Robson. I thought I thought it was a bit up and down, but I think I thought sorry he deserved a bit more time. I haven't been honest with you. He never got it. Um, they brought an experienced campaigner in. It, it clearly didn't work there. Um, so yeah, that, I think they're they're in trouble. And certainly, if you, you're talking about budgets, Paul, they're third, fourth. Yeah. And, and the Premier League yeah. yep. and the owner has poured in millions we know that Dave Cormack uh, maybe gets uh, it gets involved so much about it sometimes you know people talk about fans being in boardrooms it's different for him he owns it or he's a major shareholder but sometimes I think the passion uh, can affect the head the head uh, should rule rather than the heart Stephen Big Derek has been on a Derek it's not Derek Johnson another Derek Rangers fan also he's saying Who's going to win the league? It's going to be Rangers and Celtic because you're in a unique, unique position that you've played against both. So. Barry, Barry can yeah. answer. <laughs> Barry has one. Yeah, Barry has said who he thinks it's going to be. He thinks it's going to be Rangers. It's going to be really tight. But he said... And I'm not, I'm not yeah. saying that because I'm a former Rangers yeah. player. I, I, I just get a feeling that I think there's a bit of momentum there mm. uh, with, with, with Rangers. I do think it's it's going to get right down to the wire if I'm being honest with you. Mm. Um, but listen, what a brilliant final eight or so weeks of the season both are in the semi-final there's uh, a couple of games coming up there's some tough games as well and then you've got a split I like the split I really enjoy the split so it'll be interesting to see um, who gets who um, so I'm looking forward to it let me ask you sorry I, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I look yeah. like I was only sure. kind of carrying of on I think yeah. I, I got a lot of criticism a couple of years ago and I kind of first started doing media stuff because I was on Rangers Wonder Gerard. I was on Sports Scene mm-hmm. and, they were, and I said I just want to be competitive mm-hmm. And at the time, there was a massive gap. Gerard was running away with it. And it was the same under Rodgers. And I'd, if I was doing press at that time, I'd, I'd have said the exact same thing. I just want to see it close. Mm-hmm. Because when it's close, mm-hmm. what's the what's yeah. the seasons you remember? I don't know, unbeaten ones and all this kind of stuff, but mm-hmm. Helicopter Sunday. Mm-hmm. Those you, those are the ones that etch, etch in the, the fans, the Rangers fans, yep. and the rest of this. Yep. You want to be competing. I want to be trying to compete against Rangers and Celtic when I know they need to win. Knowing that whenever you, you were playing Celtic at Parkhead and there were... 10 points ahead or Rangers it's it's not really getting much of, of a you're obviously motivated and you, but you want to I want to have an impact I know I'm not yeah. going to win the league but I want to try and compete in, in both sides try and go stuck in and um, and look I think it's for Scottish football it's really good to see I thought at the start of the season it had been Celtic um, but I think maybe with they've had quite a lot of injuries I think you do need to remember that I think Vickers is a massive loss he came on against us and um Really, would you see a centre back coming on and changing the game? But he did, yeah. just making the simple things easy, going back to the keeper, keeping the ball, and, and allowing Celtic to kind of have that full on press rather than letting you out. Um, and then you look at Rangers since Clements came in; they have been a real kind of juggernaut, successful, like winning, like winning is is the they're doing it no matter how, and that's always a sign of a, a, a championship winning team. So I think they've got. I think it's going to be interesting for Celtic to get their players back. I think it'll be a really, really good um, end to the season. Yeah. And obviously Rangers being at the top just now, I'd certainly say would be the. Are they the thought of one point? Uh, uh, is it because um, the Dundee uh, game is cancelled? Celtic at one point. What, but the Dundee, get, yeah, because Dundee get mm-hmm. cancelled. So mm-hmm. I think if they were to win that, we'd be sitting going right. I think Rangers in a real good po- mm. uh, position right now. Because that was quite a thing for you to beat Rangers the other week. Yeah, no, yeah. definitely. Yeah, Look, yeah, I was, was, yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> first, I think so, it was first time in twenty yeah, seven. Yeah, cursing them. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> well, how good is he? Yeah. What is yeah. he? <laughs> yeah. But it had been such a run because until then they'd only lost one game, and that was to Celtic. Yep. No. And look again. The, the even against us, I think yep. you've played at Rangers. I've played at Ibrox, and it's been a bit tight. Like tighter. Rangers yeah. did dominate mm-hmm. that game, and they had more chances. I've been at Ibrox recently, and it's maybe been mm-hmm. they've won, but it's been a bit closer. Yep. We won, but they were. Like kind of dominant mm. in a sense. And the two teams, um, who's impressed you most? If we go Rangers, for example, <clears> yeah. Well, who's impressed you? You've come up against them. I mean, Seema's been out now for a number of weeks, but he'll be back soon. Um, 
De Jong Sterling has done well in the last well, month or two, hasn't he? Uh, Dezes was much criticised, but he's got quite a few goals. Um, Over the season, I'd probably say Butland. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think <laughs> making massive saves yeah. in Europe as well. Yeah. Yeah. I thought he was harshly done with not being in the England squad. Um, and as a signing, a good free agent, what, what about business? Um, who did that business? Who was it? Who found him? Jack Butland. Because, I mean, he was... Yeah, was, but I'll yeah. be honest with you. Look, mm-hmm. he was a young young kid when I was yeah. at, at Birmingham, but you could see the potential. Mm-hmm. You yeah. could. Yep, yeah, and I mean, he's been on to have a brilliant career. Though. My only thing that I was worried about was he hadn't played a lot of football for a couple of years, but he's come up and he, he's been he's been immense. Yeah. A real... Um, he's a big presence. character. He's a presence and goal. And some of the saves... I mean, the, the biggest thing that, that I always say is, people say it's easy to play with Rangers or Celtic because you've got all the possession, but it comes concentration levels. It might only need to make one save. And it wins you the game or it... Yep, and that might be 80 points. minutes, 85 minutes. And he's he's done that. And for him not to get into the England squad, I thought was... Um, I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it because I, I do genuinely believe that he is good enough to play with England. Yep, and spot on. And sure. I, th- I think yep. maybe... With Celtic, I think like Callum McGregor, yeah. probably similar impact to what Barry had when he was at Rangers. Like he's ever present, albeit sad, he's not sadly for Celtic, he's not present just now. But big player, Jeff Vickers. Um, what about Kyogo? What was he like to come up against? See, he's back scoring again. Sharp, yeah. <laughs> 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 Difficult to play against. Sharp, yeah. and he's he's kind of like kind of my like the height mm-hmm. goes a bit smaller. Yep. They come in at my, my right one of me and yeah. <laughs> you find these guys harder to kind of push rather mm. than the, the maybe traditional bigger guy <laughs> but it is exciting as well because you think from Rangers point of view you've got Dijon Sterling going yeah. to come back Seema Cantwell's just about to come back then you look at Celtic Carter Vickers Callum McGregor Hitati big players for both teams so they'll be at their strongest so um yeah, listen, I, I can't wait for the um, the games um, a week tomorrow. Dale asked me again today, who's it going to be? He's a big Rangers fan. And I said, it may depend on who you have fit. You know, if the Rangers um, get these top players back, and they're on the way back, and if Celtic can get... It'll Gatsby come down to who, holds, who yeah. holds their nerve. Yeah. Because th- this is nervy time. This is when both know they need to win games of football. And there, there is a fair bit of pressure that mounts on your shoulder. It's who can handle... That the best that I think will win the I league. think I think what's positive for Rangers is they, they have the success. There's players that have done it. Ta- Tav, mm-hmm. yep. Goldson. Goldson. Yep. Um so they can be passing on the experience from winning the league. Um so hopefully like it should be a really a really interesting end of the season. I, ho- I hope it goes to the, the old firm game. Mm-hmm. I think it always makes it a real big mm-hmm. kind of spectacle and, and hopefully it's a good game. That's all you ask for and then whoever wins, wins. Celtic's problems have been mainly against the other teams because obviously they've beaten Rangers twice. So if they can keep everybody fit and Rangers can, then I wonder who you think. That's putting you too much under P. But well, Ranger, I've told you who I think. Oh, I know, Barry. Yeah, yeah. He's so right. right. getting an answer. Yeah. At Stephen. No, no. Listen, wait. Let's wait. I and certainly see. think Rangers are in the yes. driving seat at the right. moment. Okay. And, yeah. I, and, and Celtic will, I think, need to win that game. Um, both, both old firms, I think, mm. to, to win it. Wow. Well. Oh wait, oh wait, 17, 17, and, and I know we're talking yeah. about the top as well, but I mean, the bottom Oof. as well. Mm-hmm. When, the, when the split comes, no, it's, it's uh, who's going to I mean? I, I don't like saying it, but I think Livingston yeah. are away. They, they're going to find it real mm-hmm. tough. But um, you look at the, the one round about Ross County, Aberdeen, mm-hmm. and you've got yourselves. If, if we'd got the one on Saturday, mm-hmm. I yep. think it would have just taken us. Kind yeah. of, you'll, you'll get enough yeah. points I, I think these will be fine yeah. but, um, as we said we spoke about it a month yeah. or so but, ago but they put the pressure right on yeah, Aberdeen I, I yeah. of course mm-hmm. yeah you'd have been on 34 points wouldn't you you're on mm-hmm. 32 Dundee on 36 and of course they're just out the top 6 it's funny how you're you're so close to it and your last game Hibs then you've got Hibs yep Hibs yep. you've got Dundee after St Mern and then, and then yeah. Hibs uh huh um, so it's really tight Motherwell on 32 below them Aberdeen on 30 St Johnson 28 Ross County 27 not much in it and then Livy on 17 points so be some end to the season big games yeah. after the split yeah. whoever mm-hmm. is in the split bottom half they're all six points yeah, they're, they're, all six they're tasty they're nervy encounter, yep. in, encounters quick break and then we're back Scotland game is what just an hour and 20 minutes away 
The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Unlock your potential and join the team recruiting real estate agents. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Friday night, Scotland in action in just over an hour's time. Scotland up against Holland. Let's hear a bit from the manager. This was him yesterday before they flew out from Glasgow after training at Lesser Hamden and what he's looking for tonight from his players. Trying to improve, we're not that level. We know we're not that level because we lost both of those games. But we were competitive in both games. The circumstances around the games are a little bit different in that we had just beaten Cyprus away to get to 15 points. We felt in a good place. England came to Hamden, played very well on the night. I thought, I thought England were good on the night. We didn't reach the standards that we want to reach so we lost that one the French game was a, was a different one again we we just qualified having watched Spain uh, beat Norway and we had a good night to be honest we enjoyed ourselves a little bit and then we went to play one of the best teams in the world two days later so if you actually watch the game against France we, we, we had some good moments in the game we, we showed that we can be competitive against these teams that's what we want to show tomorrow night against a, a very good Dutch side we want to be competitive we want to show that we're improving and obviously we want a positive result as well and Barry a great result last night for the under 21s 4-1 against Kazakhstan yeah and there's a, a few yeah. tasty young players um, coming through the, the under 21 which is obviously going to benefit the the, the full team yep. Um, so yep good result last night as I said um, and you always like to see Paul young players coming through it's um, I, I take a lot of delight in it especially when obviously I'm back at Rangers and you're seeing a yep. couple of young boys breaking through but any club to see young bright talent breaking in and then going on to obviously represent their, their, their country is excellent is it young Tommy Conway they're yeah. talking about um, they were mentioning him as a, a first, you know, a full squad member in the not too distant future. Stephen, that's a, a great result last night. Yeah, no, definitely. I've, um, I've been fortunate enough. I've commented in a, a few of the twenty ones games right. recently, yeah. and because some real good players, mm-hmm. Ben Dolk, who I thought he might have been touching on the on yeah. the squad mm-hmm. for the Euros, but I think he got quite a bad injury. Um, and I was really impressed with how they played. They played the back three, but there was a centre back. I think he's at Wigan. He was. I think it was, I want to say Morrison. Morrison. Mm-hmm. I, can't, I, I knew I, I, it just went out of my head, but they were very, very good. Um, and, and, and good good football they played, and then Connor Barn and King in front of them in the six. So it's not very good. And then you touch on young talent and players you think could make it to the first team. And then I see Lennon Miller um, every day. Yep. And what a talent he is um, for, for being 17, playing a mother's first team every week and comfortably. For sure. And, and being a miss, which is a which is a problem when you're missing a 17 year old he's a, he's a miss um, with injury so it's, uh, it's no, he um, played for the 19s I think it was against uh, Italy oh, right. yeah. so no so it's good to see Scotland being in action and, and, and again I think what it is is when the first team's successful it then means you're able to supplement it with the youth you don't need to feel there's a oh we need five, six new young players to come in because there's the team's settled they need to be right and ready to come in and, and I'm sure Steve Clark will bring them in at the right time. Scorers as well, Josh Doig, whom you mentioned earlier on, Lyle Cameron, and then the final goal for us from Louis Fiorini before Kazakhstan got a late, late goal. So we're joint top with Spain, just behind them in goal difference, Barry. So you came through the under-21s as well? Yep. Did, yep. Mm-hmm. Important yep. time? Yeah, um, always important because you've got to obviously go and get you get a taste of the experience under twenty ones and let's know you can do is is try and play with your your club, and then obviously you get the call up and um, I I think I only played about eight or nine under twenty one games before I, I got the, the big call the big yeah. call up at, at nineteen which was really young um, yeah. but listen when you you get that opportunity Paul you've got to try and grab it because I, I think about the players that I come in like. Paul Lambert, John Collins, old guys like that, like yeah. top players. Um, it's a bit of an eye opener, mm-hmm. um, but listen, you've got to go in and and show nerves of steel and show that you can compete with these yeah. guys. When you think of where they played, obviously Celtic, but they played in Germany, in Monaco, Everton, all the rest. It was top class. Stephen, were you under twenty ones as well? You were once. Uh, once played um, against Greece um, over in, in Greece. It was again cool experience. It was at Partick Thistle at the time and. Again, you don't know, similar to the, the first team ones, you don't know if you'll get another one. Mm-hmm. And I, I always say it to any young, like, why would you ever not want to go and play? I know there's some talking boys not want to go with the 21s and stuff these days. It's an amazing experience. Mm-hmm. In worst yeah. case, you're going mm-hmm. away for, if you really want to be 
negative going you're going on holiday for a week you're getting away <laughs> yeah. a fresh change of scenery um, but it was uh, it was a cool experience amazing experience and, and again um, I wouldn't say it for me it wasn't a gradual build up to then going in the first team so it didn't really have a massive impact on that but but it was not a great experience loved it mm. Barry a big win for Wales last night they've won it's been it four yeah, one. one game away from the Euros yep, yep. Um, pretty convincing against um, Finland um, yep and they're one as you mentioned they're one game away for the Euros um, and I, I'm sure they'll be confident enough that they can get there I think it'll be a bit tougher against Poland though yeah. I'd say Poland will maybe offer a wee bit more but Finland they've got some good players mm. Kamara and Cookie I Indeed. think Cookie, Cookie yeah. scored I think it was but yep. but it's uh, but you know look I think it's great for Wales to be close to qualifying and they're at home aren't they I think for it and they've got a great record recently I think I'm right in saying that Glenn Kamara playing last night as well one of the best pieces of business done in the last 10 years 50 grand I know See, I yeah. mean yeah. yeah 50 yeah. grand um, Rangers paid Dundee for him mm. and I thought he came he, he was a really good football player Paul um, and for that that sort of price um and was it, Arsenal, it, Arsenal before it? Yeah, yeah that, that was his, 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 up, his up, grounding. Up, yeah, he started at Arsenal. And uh, I think it was Neil McCann actually signed him for right. Dundee. Right. And yeah. I remember Neil McCann saying that, listen, he's a player. He, he's got the ability to go and play at a higher level. And then he obviously got that opportunity with, with Rangers and now he's, he's down south at Leeds. He was a good player as well, Neil McCann, just before your time, I would imagine. Stephen, yeah. I, I played, trained him. He, Did was, you? he yeah. came in, he was huh? uh, friends with Jackie McNamara. Um, and oh. came in he was a manager at Thistle right. and Neil came in and was in training and mm. was an absolute <laughs> he was so good mm. um, he played centre mid in training most days and I think he was going to sign mm. I, I can't yeah. tell you what age he was maybe 55 I think at the time <laughs> and uh, he was going to sign and I think he'd done his knee in training and it was yeah. real because he was technically you could see, yeah. you'd watch him go I'm, yeah he's was, in my I'm best 11 I've said that many times Paul mm -hmm. yeah. I mean you have? Uh, yeah, yeah he was just an old like one of the you no know, you get the wide players now that want to come back and I like guys that go and attack the fullbacks and he was like that um, he was brilliant to play with here's the starting 11 are you ready I can see already there's one surprise but I'll, this is the way it is the, they're giving us it the goalkeeper Angus Gunn number 3 Andy Robertson 4 Scott McTominay 6 Kieran Tierney 7 John McGinn 11 Ryan Christie 13 Jack Henry 14 Billy Gilmer 15, Ryan Porteous. 18, Lauren Shankland. You were both right. And number 22, Nathan Patterson. So on the bench then, Liam Kelly, Xander Clark and Craig Gordon. Anthony Ralston, Liam Cooper, Lyndon Dykes, Shea Adams, John Souter, Stuart Armstrong, Lewis Ferguson, Greg Taylor and Kenny McLean. And that is surprising that Lewis is on the bench, but... Um, let you take that I think one it in. wasn't yep. it, well, again yep. when you're you're picking this team or we're yep. get, guessing a team going off maybe him thinking he's going to change things mm. and, and we know what Christy can do as well we yeah. didn't really speak mm. about him no. but Christy's been one of those players maybe goes under the radar with Scotland mm. exceptional footballer uh, in the transition between uh, like defending attack mm. he's, he's so influential um, moves about the pitch and, and again you're, you're not putting these guys not in the team because no. they're poor players it's just because we were we're trying to think outside the box a wee bit, but no, look, it's, it's a very good side, strong side, and um, and and one I think could could start the could start the Euros. Yeah. Barry, you'll be disappointed that Lewis is on the bench tonight. Yeah, the only the one change is yeah. is Christy for for Lewis. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm disappointed because as I said, Paul, about eight or nine games I've watched him. For, uh, for Bologna, and he, he's he's been a standout. I'm not just saying it because he's a, no. a relation to myself. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure he'll be he'll be disappointed. But listen, he might get an opportunity at half time, um, and if he does, he'll need to grab it with both hands. And also, there's another game coming up on Tuesday. Do you, do you think it makes it easier for him how good the players are that are playing in front of him? You know, I think he would have believed Stephen that he's as good as him. Mm -hmm. That's the kind of he's he's really grounded. He, he'll, he'll no go and spit the dummy out, but he'll believe that he's as good as. Oh, well, I think he. he he needs to, he should do. But I just mean yeah. more in regard to like... He'll, he'll know there's quality. I mean, you look at... You mentioned McTominay. I, I think McTominay's a... I mean, you've trained with him. I, I've only watched him on TV. Um, I, I really like McTominay. McGinn. I mean, McGinn's got um, all the attributes. We Billy Gilmer, I spoke about him. Brilliant wee football player. Um, I mean, 
and then you've, you've got Callum McGregor who's obviously missed mm. out with injury there is real quality there and he will understand that it's not a case he just he, he walk in there he needs to earn the right to play mm. but I just thought the night he may have Good got the opportunity the, to yeah, get it, you know. he would have got that opportunity but listen he might get that opportunity at half time or maybe next Tuesday against Northern Ireland but when you look at the, the quality that he's up against um Good yeah, very good players. Sure are. Big night for Ryan Porteous, isn't it? Yeah, no, yeah. he's obviously down at Watford. Yeah. I think um, he was somebody that got quite a lot of criticism and I yeah. think it was good for him to get away from, 100%. from being up here at Hibs. He was, just, just seemed as if there was something see, positive or negative. It's, yeah, see, listen, he's like, he done the presser, yeah. I think, yeah. on a day and then watching him for Watford in the Championship, I think he's matured. I think what Stephen just mentioned there, I think it's been the best thing for him to get out of the Scottish game go down to England and listen he's, he's, he's playing really well for, for Watford but just listen to him he sounded more mature um, and I like him I, I think he's got the attributes good passing range physical quite quick um, so yep he's um, he's certainly come on leaps and bounds over the last season Are you slightly surprised that John Suter is on the bench or not Barry looking to you first what do you think? Well Big Henry's done well Yeah, um, th that was only thing that I, I thought maybe we, we Big Jack Henry being in yeah. Saudi obviously John Suter he's come back in since Balligan got that facial injury and I think Big John Suter I've seen all the games each game he's got stronger and stronger and um, Big John's always a player that I've liked and see physically now he's a big boy mm -hmm. I stood beside him not long ago and I was thinking to myself you're bigger than I thought yeah. <laughs> um, but listen he's good yeah. he's a good defender He's obviously good with the ball at his feet. And he's another one that will just need to take the opportunity when it comes, yeah. whether that's tonight or next Tuesday. I think the, the centre-backs for me is probably the position that maybe has a slight mm -hmm. bit more pressure on it mm -hmm. because I think there's, as I say, they touched on in his presser that he, the manager brought a lot of centre-backs. Mm -hmm. Grant Hanley, who yeah. has, I think he's touching maybe 47, 48 mm -hmm. caps. Mm -hmm. So he'll be itching to try and be involved and, and he's been one of uh, Steve Clark's kind of mainstays when he'd been fit obviously Jack's came in done really well in, in the middle of the three played at the right at times McKenna mm -hmm. um, now playing football so again another decision yep. so you're kind of going with, he's only got 23 to bring yep. so I think that's where maybe there could be some movement um, and who that'll be so kind of obviously you're thinking if he's sticking with that three that's played a few of the games if they do well I think that they'll be guaranteed their spots in the, in the flight of the match. I, I think it's going to be between Henry and Suter to to go or yep. between the two because oh. I think there'll be one that will get left out mm -hmm. for that Tierney's a certainty if yeah. he's fit Portis I think will go I think Big McKenna because obviously he's back playing football at Copenhagen um, he'll go because there's Cooper as well yeah do you know course, I, I, that's yeah. why I'm saying that yeah. Liam Cooper yep. plays yeah. for Leeds on the bench tonight I don't, yeah. I'm not sure if I'll he's playing that back. I'm unsure I'll yeah. need to go <laughs> and read that again <laughs> but not, I tell check, you check what, the some, there is a, few, a couple of yeah. tough decisions and see when yeah. you look at the midfield as well yeah I mean like guy like Kenny McLean doesn't start right but every time he's been asked yeah. he's come on and he's done a job he's scored important mm -hmm. goals Kicked and off it, the you campaign. may yeah. need to leave somebody Stuart, like that Stuart Armstrong, Stuart Armstrong been playing great for Southampton yeah. Stuart Armstrong I think is a very underrated player mm -hmm. Stuart Armstrong do you agree Stephen? yeah no yeah. I, I, I spoke about him a couple of weeks ago somewhere and just saying like, he, he, he's so elegant yeah. <laughs> he looks just dead easy everything he does kind of strolls past you with the ball and you're just kind of scrambling try to catch him it's, it's a lovely mm. art see you, you're only thinking about the midfield but see that centre back Stephen mentioned it that what she likes playing is three so and, and if he drops that two see yeah. if he's thinking about a four mm -hmm. that makes it yeah, even I harder don't, uh -huh. I don't yep. I, you got a make, tough decision to make it's mm -hmm. a, you'd say it's easy being a manager remember you'd, I used to play FIFA and you'd, or was it Pro Evo and Pro Evolution Soccer and, a place that, and you'd have to select the people out of the squad mm -hmm. and even I remember that was hard <laughs> so now if actually real life Steve mm -hmm. Clark tried to do it it's it's a tough ask, but it's a it's a good problem to have. Yeah. Um, because you have got good quality there. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. you would rather have that problem than yep, not the, have the at problem. The, at the worst you're picking a championship, 
player that's playing every week. That's your worst case scenario. Yeah, there was, a, there was a time you were picking championship players that didn't even play. Not that long ago. And, and that's yeah. okay, the only okay. thing with Big Grant Hanley, who I, I think every time again when he's been asked to do a job for Scotland's been been excellent. He's had an injury this season, and he's no uh, long back right. off a. Yep. But uh, a long one night, I think it was six, night, six, eight months, something yep. like that. So, I get, again, but Craig Gordon's the same. And, it's, and then yeah. you've got the goalkeeper, mm. you've got the four goalkeepers there. I know. What about Craig Gordon? You've uh, played alongside him, of course, 41 years old. Um, one of the a, one of the greats. It's amazing. Some goalkeeper. What a comeback. I no, I think to, to continually have the hunger mm. to come back at his age, mm. um, incredible. Is he a fierce trainer? Um, it, it, it no. Kind of, no, it was. <laughs> we, we don't yeah. see the goalies too often. It's no, probably the sure. hard. Yeah. But you see them in the in the shooting drills uh, and whatnot. And sometimes they'll be managing themselves right. um, for the game and that. But what you can say is, when he fancied that, you, you couldn't get it past him. Uh, I, I think if he's fit, he's got to go. I do. Um, he's a quality goalkeeper. I played with him. Uh, I think that's another real good. conundrum for the manager mm. because he's got the two um, Liam and Xander that are playing every week. Yeah. And, and playing well and, and then you've got obviously Angus Gunn who you're assuming is his number one seems to be and yep. then you've got obviously this kind of curveball of Craig coming back I know but not and, getting a regular game but playing a couple of games that yep. kind of throws the carrot in front mm-hmm. of you that he, he is fit but is he fit we don't know we don't mm-hmm. see him it's uh, again they're, they're not our problems he, he looked fit the, game, the games that I've seen him Spartans he pulled off a couple of I thought he should have saved the one that went in what a finish that was what a finish looked if he hadn't no. been away, obviously yeah. played in the game down at Capo in the quarter finals. Um, again, look look to part. I, I just think if Craig Gordon's fit, he has to go. I'm not saying he's number one. No. I think um Big Angus Big Gunn, Angus. since he's come in, has looked to part. And of he's, course yeah. he's been very good. So if Craig Gordon's fit, he goes and it's obviously going to be down to Big Xander or, or Liam or Kelly. Kelly. Your teammate. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Liam no. Kelly back on it. Doing really well, captain. He's, he's, yep. he's again um, consistently playing, available every week. Um, and again, I think he's a very different keeper to Xander. Mm. So that then maybe comes down to what the manager in looks what way? For. Well, stature for a start. Yeah, sure. But his the way he handles the ball, mm. um, communication, talking to the back line. I've not played with Xander, so I can't. Yeah, sure. I, uh, so I can't really. But, but Liam is loud. Yeah. Loud sometimes too loud. To, <laughs> <laughs> I've turned around yeah. a few times. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but no, look in in in. And, and constantly wanting to try and get better, and and, and he's out of contract as well, so it's a, it's a big, it? big summer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, get your predictions Mind next. Mm-hmm. The Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property. Start a new career as an estate agent. Call 0141 374 0409. Let's go. Just under an hour away from Scotland playing against Holland. Looking forward to tonight in the Scotland team we gave you a few moments ago. And here is the Dutch team just coming in. Flecken, of course, in goals. Gertruda, Virgil van Dijk, the captain. Aki, Simons, Wijnaldum, Memphis, Gakpo, Reinders, Wafer and Frimpong. A few names we know well there. Barry, what do you make of that? pretty strong line yeah, I, I was just thinking uh, that, Paul. Yeah. Um, They've went strong, players with a lot of quality, good experience. Um, that, that, this will be a, a, a good test for Scotland tonight. Um, and obviously you mentioned the, the Scotland team. We're looking pretty strong as well. So I'm looking forward to it, Paul. Uh, as I said, these are the type of games that Steve Clark's wanted to make when you're playing against the best. And certainly when you look through that Dutch team starting 11. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of quality. Yeah, he said what he wants from these games. Not really. Uh, just to... Uh play as well as we can play. We've had a couple of really good training sessions where I've asked them to think about maybe doing something a little bit different. I won't tell you what it is, but these are the kind of games where you, where you can use that opportunity to try something that's maybe a little bit different. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. Maybe we have to readjust after we've seen it in, in action against the Dutch. Uh, but we, we just want to keep improving, Tom. There's no, there's no, there's no real secret to that. There's no shot short circuit you just have to work as hard as you can every time you're together and respect your opposition and go out there and try to play as well as you can play and Stephen what are we going to see that's different then with this team tonight we'll give it again have you got how you think they're going to line up so I yeah. obviously would think probably a back five so it's kind yeah. of state, looks mm-hmm. similar shape so then I'm trying to think well what could be different maybe, yeah. maybe and I've never really seen it so I'm going yeah. to just pitch this out because okay. I know what kind of, 
maybe inverted like Robinson Robertson coming in off the side, maybe mm. that kind of thing, like kind of overloading them. I don't, I don't know. I, mm. I honestly don't know because it's a very similar side to what I would have traditionally yeah. picked. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm actually intrigued now to yeah, watch it to see what, yeah. what he's going to do. Barry, what's you? What do you think? Yeah, I can't see if the, what's different. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's obviously a back three getting into a back five when you're defending, and yeah. it, it, listen, it looks to me if it's going to be a diamond in the mm. the middle of the, the, the maybe pitch. even a box, but neither of those are that are that different. Yeah, we we obviously Billy, Ankin, McTominay, and McGinn, and Christie just behind. Could, but it could be McGinn and Christie in front behind Shanklin yeah. with McTominay and Billy as the two mm-hmm. sixes because mm-hmm. that was kind of motoring Nathan and Mandy pushing on. That, I'll let you know about 10 to 8 five minutes into the game would you? yeah <laughs> put it on the whatsapp I'm yeah. not as aware as but I might oh, be I maybe yeah. quarter past 8 yeah. and I'll let you know yeah. <laughs> uh, Gregory's on asking your title prediction I don't know if you quite gave it and maybe you shouldn't because you're uh, uh, playing against them but it's up to you uh, someone's on uh, asking I'll tell you who it is in just uh, a moment or two uh, but he's asking about Mika Beareth and what was he like to play alongside very good yeah. player mm-hmm. very very good yeah. player um, I think Barry, the level he's played that maybe would have had similar feelings about players when they come in the door. Mm-hmm. But literally in his first training session, I was like, he's a, he's he's a player. You could see it, and if he'd been fit the full time, I think we would mm-hmm. we wouldn't have went that run of as many games. Mm-hmm. He, he was quick, he was powerful, um, and a good finisher, and and good dribbler as well. He kind of really had all. He's doing well. Over he's went to Sturm Graz yeah. with Max Johnson, mm-hmm. um, and he's been doing doing really well by all accounts, getting goals and. It's changed the hair a wee bit, which I'm not convinced of, but other than that, no, really, really good. Just didn't see enough of him, Barry, did we? And Mike Johnson has done well uh, over there. Need to ask you about the games uh, tomorrow mm-hmm. in the Championship. Dundee United against Inverness, Barry. What do you reckon? I, re- I reckon Dundee United will... Uh, well, saying that, mm. big dunk and back, ex-Dundee United yeah. player. Yeah. Um, yeah, I just think Dundee United will just edge uh, mm. that one. They need to get back to winning ways for sure, Stephen. I still, I think Dundee United, especially after the result last week, I think um, wasn't a, ideal. Um, so it's important to do bounce back. Um, Wraith have been doing well. I, I just, I, I thought Dundee United would get promoted just to maybe they've had too much, mm. and I, I'm still going to stick with that. Um, so a United win, then you reckon? I'm, I'm hoping yeah. Thistle win. Thistle's got uh, our broth tomorrow. Yeah. So we, well, up, they'd up be favourites up there, but, but going up to our broth, yeah. I don't know if you. have mm-hmm. Up my bro through oh, there. I've played there a few times. Yeah. I've, I've only played twice, but it was, that was another. It was a tough, yeah. tough place to go. It's always windy, isn't it? It was and always windy. The North Sea, unbelievable. Yeah. At one point, the water yeah. was coming over, <laughs> and that was in the summer. <laughs> so, but you expect the Jags to win? I think. Yeah, you're nodding. I, I hope yeah. so. Okay. I hope so. Barry, what do you think? Yeah, I think Partick Thistle will go up to Arbroath and, and come away with the three points. And what about uh, Ayr against Queen's Park? I think that's the yeah. championship game of the day, that one. Jamie Murphy was on last night, as you know. Yeah, the... still playing yep. uh, down at Ayr United. I think Scott Brown's come in and done a, a good mm-hmm. jo- job there. Similar to Queen's Park, Callum Davison mm-hmm. has come in and steadied the ship there. Um, yeah, I think that'll be a I think that'll be a close one. I'm going to go a score draw on that one. Score draw at Somerset. I think looking, remember we spoke about the bottom six and then how the games are tight. I think that is something that I've loved and I, they didn't, we didn't have it when I played in the Championship mm-hmm. was the playoffs. Mm-hmm. See when you look at it, I'm looking at the league. So the are both potential look like they're cut adrift mm-hmm. a wee bit. But then you go Inverness, Queen's Park, Ayr and even to fit all for kind yeah. of the, the ninth place for the playoffs, you're going to, mm-hmm. it makes it, you've got something to play for in every game. Yep. Um, I remember the, my first season mm-hmm. I think we were maybe seventh or eighth, and we won a game, and it pretty much we couldn't get relegated, and it did. Albeit again, you were, you all had your own individual things you were playing for. Yeah. If it was you were young trying to do well, you were getting a contract, whatever it was. But as a whole, the collective didn't really. It was it was done. We couldn't mm. we couldn't get promoted. We were nowhere near it, and we were nowhere near relegation. It was it was strange. strange. I didn't like it. No. I'd rather be it than getting relegated. Mm. Yeah. But, but the, now there's the something to play for if 100%. you get that result you can obviously climb into that playoff spot what about the ton against the Pars so Morton against Dunfermline Stephen O'Donnell what do you reckon I would certainly Morton have been in good form obviously it was a great result the other night for Dunfermline yeah. was it was it 3-1 three, three I think it was last Friday night it was it was against yeah, yeah, yeah. Dundee United but Morton had been in a great run mm. Not so a couple of results recently not so good but um, yeah I think it'll be a tough one for Dunfermline so you think Morton Morton you reckon Barry what do you feel I think this is going to be a close one as well. Mm-hmm. Well, um, the family are picked up 
over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. They looked if they were heading down towards um, struggling for that, to, no struggling, playoff but in spot, terms yeah. of they were getting into that playoff spot. A couple of good results. In, um, yep, I think I'm going to go Dunfermline just to edge that one. Okay, there you go. And tomorrow, our own Stephen McGinn will be leading out Falkirk against Edinburgh City. And of course, Barry will pin you to say, but if Aki slip up at all at Cove Rangers, then Falkirk would be definitely on the way up. I know, listen, Aki's are, are going to win the playoffs, but uh, uh, sorry, Falkirk have cruised yeah. that. Absolute cruise that. Um, unbeaten still. Mm. I mean, yep. what, a, what a run they've been on. Um, so I fully expect Falkirk to beat Edinburgh City and obviously Hamilton travelling up to Cove. Yep, if they drop, is it if they get beat or they drop? I think if they couple, drop points, I think it is. Falkirk's yep. won the title. We played Falkirk in pre-season mm-hmm. and it was at DL and quite a tight pitch huh? and the football they played yeah. absolute popped us. Yeah. And uh, you can maybe argue we were maybe a different stage yeah. in pre-season or what, that kind of stuff but they played some really nice stuff and, and I'm not surprised to see how, how well they've done this season. Prediction time in a moment, but before it, Stephen O'Donnell, it's been great having you on with us tonight. Barry, you've enjoyed it. It's good to get him yep. in. Yep. Yep. Sure does. You know, his mum and dad, of course, as well, mm-hmm. so we give them Bumped all the best. Them yeah. last, Did you? Last, yeah. last Saturday, yeah. Uh, Mary Jo, yeah, and all the family. He says that if I meet him in the restaurant, he's going to get the bill. He says, all right, so yeah. next time, <laughs> I'm making sure I'm going every Saturday. Yeah, night excellent. Night. Yeah, I, I won't say where, but uh, I'll be going. Uh, Stephen, who was the biggest influence in your career? Um, just throwing this one at you or a few of them the people it doesn't have to be just one person there's some, there's some, yeah. if he doesn't say he's old man he'll I know exactly. well, <laughs> my, my dad's look the commitment yeah. your parents uh, or my parents had them yeah. uh, was, was incredible and I couldn't be anywhere without them yeah. um, even still now the support yeah. with the, my, my kids I stay sometimes on Friday night my mum will stay at my, my house and Brilliant. stuff like that before games so without them they've obviously a massive influence but football wise there's a whole host there's like a coach Gary Gibson that's in at Rangers mm-hmm. Um, he was my coach and I, I remember a lot of the basics of movement when I was maybe 10, 11, 12 getting taught off him mm-hmm. and it still remembers him and John Ward were my coaches um, at Aberdeen then you move on Jackie McNamara was the first manager that kind of probably properly believed in me yeah. and that had a massive impact and then obviously he, he, Steve Clark yeah. um, Alec McLeish sell it to me for Scotland every time was 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 unforgettable well good luck for the till, till the end of the season and next season as well the negotiations Stephen thank you very much what's going to happen tonight do you think with Scotland uh, and Tuesday as well I know it's about performance and all this but what do you feel look I, I hope to see whatever Steve Clark has asked for that's the first thing um, and I, I, I hope that it's a, a positive result I think it draws a good result over there I think um, playing some good stuff and, and, and getting a draw would be a good result and showing that we can compete and then hopefully getting getting the, the win and uh, on Tuesday against Northern Ireland and a score draw did you say I would take a score yeah. draw mm-hmm. who's our scorer who do you think Sh- Sh- Shangland uh, uh, listen yeah, I would take would. it I mean yeah. I'm yeah. looking Ferguson at coming on um, yeah. I'm yeah. looking at that Dutch team and it is a strong Dutch yeah. team um, be happy with yeah. a draw um, I think it, I think it could be tough tonight and England against Brazil tomorrow I know Brazil aren't what they were but that'll be a big game down there uh, at Wembley Barry thanks so much enjoy the weekend cheers Paul you're back on Monday at 5 yep. with me and Mark Goody who will be here and uh, enjoy the christening tomorrow thank you very much until next time great thank you Stephen don't be a stranger to us that'd be brilliant thanks so much Zoe Kelly is up next but the news will be next uh, with Jess that's coming in one minute the Go Radio Football Show with Go Green Property looking to sell property in Glasgow call Kayleigh and the team on 0141 374 0409 let's go when it comes to selling your home at Go Green Property our aim is to get you the best possible results and how do we do this simple by giving you the best possible advice from expert insights on preparing your home for selling to sharing our advice on the local property market at Go Green Property it's our job to achieve the best possible price as quickly as possible sell your home with Go Green Property call Glasgow 374 0409